Day Austin on Fox 7 with Amanda Salinas, Dave Fralick, Lauren Petrowski, and Zach Shields. Coming up on this hour of Good Day, a late night shooting involving a police officer leaves one man dead in southwest Austin. Plus, a few Maynard students are arrested after an attack on a principal. And an arrest has been made after a fire at a Florida mosque. We'll have the details coming up on Good Day Austin. You're watching Good Day Austin on Fox 7. Hi, everybody. A little after 7 o'clock on your Thursday morning. Thanks for joining us. We've got to talk about rain chances and humidity, certainly. But right now, we can just enjoy the sunrise. It's that time of day. That has been beautiful this week. Yeah, absolutely. Zach? You got that right. Gorgeous start to your Thursday. Minute after 7 o'clock, taking a peek outside with our sky cam. Uh, just a few minutes away from the sun waking up and we'll see plenty of it, especially uh, this morning. Here we are halfway through September and still no signs of a fall preview. The heat humidity combo went out. Not feeling too awful out there right now. A blend of 60s and 70s. The rain we had out there yesterday, long gone. We're going to need the heat of the day to get a few more icy showers going. Uh, the wild card of the forecast for the rest of the week. What happens with this upper low over the western Gulf? It's going to have a tough time making it all the way into central Texas, but I think it's going to be close enough that it will continue to throw deep tropical moisture our way. Then you factor in some daytime heating. We can't close the book on the isolated shower threat. 20% chance of rain hitting your neighborhood. Highs reaching 93, but heated to seas. Feels like numbers reaching 98 to 102. And it looks like our rain chances could increase a little more with a front low combo coming to town for the weekend. We'll talk much more about that coming up in just a few moments. But right now, let's see what's happening on the roadways on this Thursday morning with Randy Taylor. Hey, Randy. Hey there, Zach, and good morning to you at home. Things are looking pretty typical out around the metro. As far as rush hour delays are concerned, you can see 35 at Stasny. It is wall to wall here, but like I said, pretty typical, nothing out of the ordinary. Now, I do have some good news. That accident westbound 290 at Albert Volker Road, that has cleared, but you're still seeing a bit of a delay. And we have replaced that accident with one southbound 183 at Oak Knoll. It has things backed up to High Meadow Drive, so you are looking at about a 10 minute delay in the area. But again, if your destination is westbound on 290 this morning from SH 95 to 35, you're looking at just about a 50 minute commute. I'm Randy Taylor, Fox 7 Traffic. One man is dead after a late night officer involved shooting in southwest Austin. A 911 call on a suspicious man soon turned into something much more. Mr. and Tanya are taken live from the scene with that story. Tanya? And Dave, two APD officers are currently on administrative leave as investigators try to figure out exactly what happened here last night. But they do tell us that they have a, a video that was shot by a neighbor that shows that the suspect shot at the, at the officers first. It happened here at the 4200 block of Monterey Oaks Boulevard at the Sedona Springs apartment complex in southwest Austin. Police tell us that a call came in around 1030 last night about a man looking into cars, possibly trying to break in. Four officers responded, but after an hour, they cleared the call because they were unable to find him. About 20 minutes later, another call came in about the same suspect. Officers responded again and this time located the man who ran from police, leading them on a foot chase. They called for air support and the K-9 unit. That man was eventually found in the back of the complex. He was tased by officers who then proceeded to command the man to roll over and put his hands up. But after several minutes of giving him commands, the suspect pulled out a gun and started shooting at the officers who returned fire. Police continued to give the man commands, telling him they were trying to get him medical attention. They eventually separated him from his weapon and treated him before EMS arrived. He was taken to South Austin Hospital where he died from his injuries. The suspect is described as a white man. That's all the information we have about him. The two officers who used deadly force have been placed on administrative leave. One has been with APD for nearly three years, the other for nearly 24 years. And that video captured by a neighbor is helping police figure out exactly what happened. Having watched that cell phone, I stand here tonight saying that we are fortunate we didn't lose an officer tonight. When he rolled over and produced that weapon and fired at our officers, they were in very close proximity and they did an outstanding job reacting to the deadly force that was put their way. 
and several investigations are currently ongoing through the Austin Police Department. One is an internal investigation, the other a special investigation. They are working with the police monitor and the DA on this on this whole thing. And of course, we're going to keep everybody updated as soon as we get some more info on what happened here. We're going to send it back to you. All right, Tanya, thank you very much. We have an update on last night's death in Kyle. Police have arrested a man in connection with that killing. Andrew Ruben Martinez is now charged with murder. It happened last night just before 11 in the Waterleaf neighborhood. Officers responded to a report of possible shots fired in the 100 block of Myrtle Street. They found a man outside with injuries. Paramedics treated him at the scene, but he died just after midnight. An autopsy has been ordered on the victim. Kyle Police Chief Jeff Barnett says this appears to be an isolated incident and they don't believe the community is in danger. He's expected to hold a press conference later today to release more information. Six Maynard ISD students have been arrested following an incident that happened on campus that police say started with an assault on a principal. The Maynard Police Department says this happened around 1.30 yesterday at the Maynard Placement Campus, or MAP, when a student was not allowed to get on a bus that takes them to lunch. The principal, Dr. Marcus Jones, says he was standing between 17-year-old Osipo Cameron and the bus trying to calm Cameron down. He says Cameron then tried to push past him and started throwing punches. Officers were called in to help, and while they were trying to handcuff the teen, five other students got involved. Both MAP and the Excel Academy were placed on lockdown as a precaution while law enforcement got that situation under control. They say it's something they don't usually see there. If it's one kid, we can usually talk them down, and we don't have to even arrest the one kid. And if anything, we're arresting the one kid that caused the issue, and, then, and you know we're done with it. But this... Uh, it was escalated since the students, um, additional students kept interfering, which led to putting the officer's safety at risk, the teacher's safety at risk, and also other students' safety at risk. Cameron is charged with assault on a public servant. The five other students were arrested on charges of interference with public duties. Police in Florida say they've arrested the man who started a fire at a mosque in Fort Pierce. 32-year-old Joseph Michael Schreiber is accused of setting the fire on Sunday. Officials released surveillance video of the incident. Police say Schreiber was in prison before and is a habitual felony offender. If convicted, he faces at least 30 years behind bars. We need to be leaving the water, the air, and the land in as good or better shape than we found it. Protests against the Dakota Access Pipeline continue across three states. The 1,000-mile pipeline would connect the oil production from North Dakota into Illinois. Opponents say this project would pass through sacred Native American soil and taint the drinking water. More than 30 protesters have been arrested in the last two days at the pipeline construction site. Eight people were arrested yesterday, including three who locked themselves to construction equipment. A federal judge denied the tribe's efforts to stop the pipeline's construction, even though construction is delayed. The NFL announces it'll make millions of dollars available for concussion research. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell made the announcement yesterday. He says the league will commit $100 million towards medical research and improving technology to help treat and prevent serious concussions in football players. Members of the San Francisco 49ers say they support the initiative but want to see it in action first. So I think what the league is saying is, is that this is an opportunity for us to go out and engage other experts outside of our own world to help us come up with better solutions, better practices for us to do a better job in servicing and protecting our players. The announcement comes one week after a Carolina Panthers game in which quarterback Cam Newton took an unfair hit to the head and the league's concussion protocol was never implemented. More the same as we go into your Thursday. Lots of heat and humidity. Uh, no signs of that fall field just yet. We are tracking a front to our north and a Gulf low to our south. That will team up and bring us some weekend changes. We'll talk more about them coming up next in weather.